Sometimes it's good to just yell about football. What are you doing? Don't do this to me, Harry! The Ohio State! It's Ohio State! What do you mean, the? It's a poison! I almost stroked out and died over it. I'm glad to be at the party. I'm mad we're this late. You ain't a captain of nothing but a sinking ship! That helps the defense without them even doing a damn thing! 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 Doing a damn thing! In a calling line. 312 988 15. You tell Johnny all oh, you've heard and seen. Oh, 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 oh Irish! Oh, 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 Irish! Oh, 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 Irish! Oh, oh, Irish! Oh, Irish! Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. Welcome in, welcome back, folks. I am back. I am a little more tan. I'm in one piece. I'm back from Florida. I missed you guys. I don't like being out of the mix. I feel, I don't know how to put it. When I don't talk to you guys on the call-in, I start feeling like I'm like not connected to Notre Dame land anymore or something. Like I put out videos and then you watch them even while I'm on vacation recording from the balcony, scaring the golfers, doing all that. It's just not the, it's not the same connection. It's not the same connection. So I'm really glad to be back with you guys live to be able to connect with you and get caught up. So that's what I want to do today. Open forum anywhere you want to go. So that's how we're going to have to do this week to allow me to get caught up. Um, anything you want to call about, I whether it's the quarterback thing, anything going on in practice, recruiting, whatever it is. I want to get us caught up and give you guys an ability to sound off on anything you want to go, any direction you want to go. So that's what we're going to do. I already have a a lot of things I want to go over, but I already have a few callers who I'm sure over the last week have ideas built up. I'll get through the introduction, go right to the caller, see what you guys think, and then whatever time I have after that, I'll do my stuff. And if not, it could be Wednesday, whatever. I owe you guys your phone calls. That's what this is for is an open forum. And we've had all this news. So I want to give you a chance. Uh, thank- <laughs> Rodney, thanks for the $2 holler. April Fool's Day, John Hawk. I know. Since I was getting back from Florida and then we had the holiday yesterday, I didn't even really have time to come up with a prank for April Fool's or to come on here with the Michigan shirt and tell you this is always Wolverine. I I didn't have time to do any of that. It's got me all messed up. Larry says, welcome back, John, and great news on Saka. Yeah, that that was uh, was a a good thing to see. Good thing to see for 25. Phil, what's going on? Mark. He says he saw a headline. Gosh, you guys are funny. Mark, saw a headline. Florida man caught complaining about Notre Dame football while on vacation with family. (laughs) Tom Frawley, good morning to you, sir. Uh, Tom, I owe you a call. I missed it when we were in Florida. I don't even remember what we were doing. We were doing something when you called. um, And uh, you and I got to connect to... Look at this $10 olive from Tom Chris 2488. Welcome back, John. See you in a few weeks. Go Irish. Yes, uh, indeed. Here's the thing. Again, somebody put in the chat early this morning. Um, they said, John, is this tailgate open to people that haven't been there before that you don't like personally know yet? Absolutely it is. Absolutely it is. That's how the family grows. Like, that's how this has gone every time we've done one of these tailgates is the next time we do a tailgate, we have more people that think it's fun, see that the group is nice and wants to be a part of it. Everybody's welcome. Uh, That's how it grows. I I got a Miller Lite for you. Whether I know you or not, you could even be somebody who's trolled me before. Come to the tailgate. Who was it? Somebody else asked where we'll be set up. I always shoot for the parking lot in front of Frank. That's my goal. And we usually get there early enough you could get in there. So that's the goal is in front of the Frank Leahy gate, somewhere in that lot, 
uh, that's kind of what I'm going to shoot for. And again, I'm going to have two flags. I'm going to have my always Irish flag. And I'm also going to have uh, the Goolsby and Kennedy show flag. I got one made for the logo for Patreon. So you you won't be able to miss it because we'll be flying both. So uh, everybody's invited all day, whatever. You don't have to bring nothing. I don't expect anything. Just come and be a part of the group. Say hi, have a beer, eat a wiener, do whatever you're going to do there. Okay. So that's the idea. Uh, Angela Rudiger. I think I'm bringing some more Rudigers. Angela, you can bring more Rudigers. You got to control them. That's all I'm going to tell you. If you're bringing more Rudigers, you got to keep control of them. I'm going to be busy. Good to see you, Angela. The more Rudigers, the better. That's fine. Uh, that's always good. Always Irish senior in the house. Good morning, everybody. Blue and gold tailgate. Can't wait. Let's go. Always Irish Senior, appreciate the ride from uh, from Midway. Appreciate that. My airport pickup. Format, you know what I mean. Give me a break. What is this? What is this? Don't do this to me. Who's doing this? I wanted to start this out in a good mood. Why are you... Whoever's doing this, I credit for their trolliness. Don't do this to me, man. I just come back. I just come back. I'm trying to talk about Notre Dame, and now you're hitting me with this Jerry Reinsdorf burner. Can you be remotely optimistic about the Sox season? We only lost all three games by one run each. Dead to me. You're dead to me. I'm done. I'm not going. I don't care if it's free. I don't, I'm not going. I'm not giving them one more of my dollars. I know it doesn't change anything. I don't care. It's my little battle. There is no such thing as John just enjoying a sunny day at the ballpark while my team's getting their head caved in. This, that's just not for me, you guys. I know, oh, it's summer baseball, summer, you know, America's pastime. Everybody go to the ballpark and relax. And it doesn't matter if your team's out of the race in April, down 20 games in the standings. Go have a, a hot dog and enjoy your day. It isn't enjoyable to me. It's not enjoyable to me. All right? I don't have the ability to turn off that competitive gene and just sit there and watch my team get their head kicked in, but it's sunny, so I have a good day at the ballpark. No. I don't have that in me. They are not serious about baseball. They don't care about the fans. They tell you every chance they get they don't like us. They don't even try and win, and they throw it in your face, and I'm done. I'm just done. So I, I tweeted the other day, my over-under win total for the White Sox is set at zero. And right now, the under is winning. I didn't want to do that. But Jerry Reinsdorf's burner, come on, man. After me on purpose, changing their name to that just to get me wound up. Welcome back from Florida, John. Hope you're relaxed. My blood pressure went from... Florida chill to back. I'm back. Let's just put it that way. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. All right. Let's get back on track. I'm already getting thrown off here by that. I didn't expect that to come. Unbelievable. Believable. All right. Thank you for being here, everybody. Obviously, you can find the program on YouTube. Do it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Appreciate it very much. Give the video a thumbs up. That helps Yanni Boy out as well. Notifications on that way. You alerted every time a new episode drops. I will, uh, you don't want to miss it. Twitter, search bar, always Irish, rat, always Irish, shake. Emails, always Irish, ND at gmail.com. Audio only anywhere you want it, you can get it. The call in lines, 312 988 Dial it up, tell Johnny all you heard and see. Instagram, Facebook, Always Irish Shake, USA Today, Fighting Irish Wire. You can read all about it. Patreon.com, a slash Always Irish. Former captain leading tackler, Mike Goolsby. 
breaking it all down behind the paywall. We even had to do an emergency show from Florida because news breaks every time I'm gone. Every time I'm gone. Yeah. Yeah. Good one. Tom says talk ND football. <laughs> Mikey. Lower that blood pressure with some Notre Dame football talk. Yeah, dude, I cover some high stress. I It's some high stress activity I do, man. The White Sox are my team and then Notre Dame. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's funny. Somebody asked why. I don't know. I'm a White Sox fan. We weren't Northsiders growing up. We were Southsiders. Grandpa Kennedy, you say we, we root for two teams. The White Sox and whoever's playing the Cubs. That's how I grew up. That's what Grandpa Kennedy always said that. Uh, that's who we root for. The White Sox and whoever's playing the Cubs. And that just always stuck stuck with me. Uh, and I, Oh, boy. What's going on in the phone line? My screen's blanking in and out. What's going on? What, do I not have it plugged in? Jeez, what a rough start. Glad to be back. But run. hey, here's a question for you guys. How do you do all my clock and everything's messed up from traveling on this computer? Can you manually go in there and set it back to the right time? It's not even off just the hour of going from central to eastern time zone. It's all messed up. How do you reset the clock on here to be the right time? Did I really travel through a time warp with this laptop on a, on a plane? I don't get it. How do you do that? Mark says the Cardinals suck too, John. It's okay. I, it doesn't make me feel any better. Well, I don't care about the Cardinals. I want them to be good to beat the Cubs. So I, It doesn't do me any good to have them be bad. It doesn't make my team not bad. Oh, boy. I did click on the clock, and then it says, do the manual, do this, and then nothing happens. I don't know, but it's bugging me. It's throwing off all my timing and my whatever. Anyway, look at, <laughs> uh-oh, John's inner boomer show. He can't change the time of the computer. It's a real age problem. I clicked on it. It didn't change. It wouldn't. I don't. Uh, anyways, ndsubwayalumni.com. Be sure, be sure to be there and, uh, and go get yourself a Lewski, go get yourself a, a sweatshirt, get yourself a t-shirt. I appreciate it. For Bruce, I tried doing the settings date and time. It wouldn't let me manually. I don't know. I'll have to go back in. I won't worry about it right now. Go Cubs. I believe today is opening day at Wrigley. Going to be, I think, rough weather. Just kind of wet. Yeah, but it ain't going to stop them from drinking. Wrigleyville's going to be popping today, baby. It's going to be popping today. That's for sure. John needs an in-studio engineer. That is the truest thing you've ever said. I do four jobs that have four different guys doing them at a radio show. Call, screener, tech guy, uh, you know, whatever else. You got to, uh... oh man, I do need an engineer. I need a call screener to set all that up. I need something to keep me on track, something. Oh, Commander Luke's here ripping on the, uh, ripping on the recruiting class. Glad to see nothing's changed with you in a week. <laughs> I can always rely on you, baby. I can always rely on you. It's a beautiful thing, I think, maybe. Probably not. All right. So here's all I'm going to say to to do my intro and I'll throw it to the callers and then I'll get back into what I want to. But I, I already made you guys wait and I don't want to make you wait anymore. Um, here's where what I'm going to start is every single time I'm in Florida, news breaks and I cannot take calls immediately. The last three trips, huge Notre Dame news broke and leading up to it when I am in Illinois. I'm like, man, it's just kind of slow. I wish we had some more Notre Dame action to talk about. It's kind of the same old thing. And then the minute I'm in Florida and can't take calls, boom, stuff happens. The Ludwig fail, that happened. Denbrock, that happened in Christmas when I was in Florida. And then the Riley Leonard injury thing was right literally while I'm packing to go to the airport, like 
all that news breaks. And it's really, really frustrating that I wasn't able to take the calls and, and do, uh, you know, do my old thing and get your guys reaction. Um, and so I, you know, that's just the way it goes. It's wild, good trip, good weather, whatever. And then I just don't, uh, I'm just not able to be with you guys. It's very frustrating. I have two stupid Florida stories that happened to me. That's the other thing. Every time I'm in Florida, something dumb happens. Uh, and so I have two of those stories. I think you guys are going to laugh at both of them, but they're going to wait till after the calls because they deserve, uh, they deserve their time. Dr. John says, simple solution. Don't go to Florida. You will understand this, Dr. John. My parents have a place in Florida, so that's bought and paid for on the golf course, free to stay, and my brother lives five minutes away from them with his wife and, and new son. Florida's the place I'm going to go for a vacation for now. I get to see my nephew, see my brother. I have a beautiful place to stay on a golf course five minutes from the ocean. Like It's a pretty good deal, so that's why it's Florida. Uh, if, if I go on a trip, I, I mean, I want to see my brother and do all that, hit the town, you know, do whatever. Um, and so that's, that's why it's always kind of Florida. John will transition, transition into Florida man later in life. That's, that's scary. I'm not going to become one of them Python hunters in the Everglades. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. All right, a couple super chats, then I'm giving it to the calls. I got three of you lined up now. Stay on. All three of you are going to have your time. You'll be the first three up. You know who you are. Uh, Andrew, hope you enjoyed Florida, buddy. Time to get back to business. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? Mikey, starting to make plans for the tailgate game, trying to get my parents to join us. It's going to be fun, man. If you could get some half-decent weather... If you can get half decent weather, we're we're in business. Why can't uh, Freeman close? Why can't Al and Freeman close on these top recruits, specifically D line? Oh, it's always been a battle for Notre Dame. It seems. C Jones, you never shall return to the state of Florida for the sake of the Irish. There you go. I mean, I guess I'm getting banned from the state. Wow, that's wild. All the stuff that goes on there, I'm getting banned. Oh, man. I think we've been too quick to buy into ND's NIL strategy. All the money's going to one-year rentals. Isn't that partly because we... I mean, my understanding is that that makes sense to me because we don't do a lot of the undergrad transfers because of all the credits. So most of the guys you get are going to be one-year guys. Right? Like, I don't love that. If you could get good younger guys that have a couple years left and do that, go ahead and do that. But my understanding is that's why it's one year rentals because they have trouble getting underage guys in, not underage, but like underclassmen to be able to transfer after like their first or second year. So I don't know. And then as far as the NIL strategy, the actual strategy, Andrew, I think the scenario you ended up in is people were just glad to hear Notre Dame's in the mix with NIL and they're putting money out anywhere and they were just glad to see that. And so that was like enough for progress. Now I think Notre, <clears throat> Notre Dame's getting to the point of refining NIL to the point where you need to start asking more specifically about allocation and the strategy more than just as long as we're offering NIL and writing some checks, we're happy. It's all good. Maybe now it's more about refining the actual strategy to be most beneficial. So I do think there is something to that. I think initially me and many people were just glad to see Notre Dame in the mix and getting all that going at all. So that's, I think, a learning process. Also, Andrew, I'm going to be careful what I say here. You would be surprised the way some of this happens with the NIL thing, even at Notre Dame. Take that however you want. I will admit I was surprised by how some of this went down, how some of this goes down. <clears throat> even at Notre Dame, it is not the most perfect process, even with this money. There's a lot of people involved that promise a lot of things that probably shouldn't. 
let's just leave it at that. So there's definitely things to work on and tighten up there. Nikki Dean loves to be heard and seen. With this injury that slams the door open for Minchie and Angeli to take some serious leaps forward, that is one of the bigger questions I want to focus on this week because I missed all the Riley Leonard reaction. I want to know what you guys think this does to the quarterback room, what it changes for spring, what it changes in August. How should the staff approach August? is a big question. You're going to do what you're going to do the rest of spring with the reps you have to have with who's injured and available, whatever. I want to know when, when August camp starts, what should the plan be? If Riley Leonard's healthy, you run him out there and he's number one, or he missed all spring, had a bunch of development to do that didn't happen. And now if it's Angeli or whoever emerges this spring, they get the number one spot and Riley Leonard, if he's going to overtake him has a few weeks to do that. I want to know what you want and think the planet quarterback's going to be. Nothing's ever black and white. It's all gray area, man. Notre Dame football, it's just permanent gray area. Every time you think, every time you think you have something figured out of like just a clear this or that, the well gets tainted and here we are again. Mikey, don't get me started on QB talk, John. I think I'm the only one who thinks Angeli ain't it. He's another Buckner Pine. Give you an eight and four season at best. Minchie has a higher ceiling, but a lower floor. Yeah, and how do you calculate all that? How do you calculate all that? I believe Angeli has the least physical upside of all the guys in that quarterback room. That doesn't mean he might not be the most uh, ready to go if Riley Leonard can't. And I struggle with that in my brain too. I think he has the least physical upside of all the guys in that room. That doesn't mean that he might not place if Riley Leonard can't go or whatever. It's a very tricky thing. And again, in my mind also, what happens to the odd man out? Somebody want to leave when they see that they're not even second string, they're third string. Does this spring being messed up drag all that out where you don't have a Buckner who had his bags packed and the second the blue and gold game was over, he was in Alabama. Everybody at the blue and gold game was going, why does he look like he's checked out playing like a zombie in the blue and gold game? I know why, because he was checked out playing like a zombie in the blue and gold game. His mind was in Alabama. He was totally frustrated and checked out. He was like, <laughs> Still on the job, but checked out thinking of somewhere else. Okay. <laughs> oh, I've been beefing with LSU people. I've been beefing with them. That doesn't stop. I'm in Florida. It's a Southern thing, I guess. I start beefing with uh, Blake over there at one at his channel. Andrew, if you think about it, ND's three best players on the team are currently injured. Morrison, Evans, and Leonard. Terrible luck for Freeman. Ain't that the way it goes? Look at this, Mark. Last week, I got a new puppy and my wife wrecked the car. So I'm glad we had a week off because I would have had some wild takes in the chat because all that plus my QB had another surgery. I hope your wife is okay, man. I'm sure you would have mentioned if she wasn't and not made it about the car. Did the Are these connected? Did the new puppy have something to do with wrecking the car? That's the other thing. You explain this to me. Explain this to me. Somebody got to. You're not even allowed to drive around and use your phone anymore. But I'm in Florida and everywhere you go, there's people with a dog on their lap while they're driving. How are you not even allowed to use your phone, but you can have a living animal moving around on your lap while you're driving through traffic? I don't get it. J Carr, let's see if he returned with the Florida Gold Grills. Yeah, I'm getting them fitted out. That would be perfect for me, though. Little gold grills with shamrocks or a leprechaun put in the insignia. I like that. Oh, I like that. Here we go. Uh, good morning, John. Welcome back. What lot were your tailgate being? Uh, we kind of covered that earlier. I always shoot for right in front of Frank. That And it's free parking. You just have to get there early. There's not a million cars. It's a lot easier to navigate. I am shooting for... 
in front of Frank. That's my guy. You all know that. It's the best marking point. And if I'm going to start my day somewhere in Notre Dame, I want it to be in the presence of Frank Leahy, okay? Uh, I want that. Makes my soul feel comforting, uh, comfortable. I like that. Two flags. You won't be able to miss them. So wherever we're at, it'll be in that main parking area. Also, last year they were doing construction on those parking lots and there was not as many spaces available and it got kind of tricky. I'm hoping all that's done by now and there will be a lot more space for everybody to get in there this year. So uh, for the the ten dollar holler, Homer TD five dollar holler. Uh, God bless you, Tony. Talk to you over the uh, the last couple days in the how they looked like you had a good family gathering there. Oh no no no! Don't do this. No 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 no. Hey Johnny, did a snake slither into your luggage? You come back to Chicago with you? Don't start that. I don't mess with no snakes. You cannot trust anything without legs. That's just a general rule. If you take one real life rule from me in life, it's not a football philosophy where I'm all crazy and whacked out. If you're going to take one of my life philosophies and really run with it as gospel, that's the one. Don't trust anything without legs. You just can't trust them as a human. That's that's my suggestion to you. Trust nothing that doesn't have legs. They're too different. You, you don't know what they're doing. You don't know how far away from you got to be to be safe. I, I You just can't. You just can't. Um, Ohio, that used to be my joke. Uh, I used to say something along those lines. I will make an exception for United States military veterans. Other than that, what about fish? You going to uh, trust a shark? I don't trust no shark. You, uh, no way. Uh, you can't trust a shark. And these snakes, man, in Florida, come on. Come on, man. All these people get them pythons as a pet and let them out. And then, and then they have 80 babies. And before you know it, they're eating all the, the, the raccoon population in the Everglades National Park. I learned this. Down 99%. 99% down since the, the pythons got in there. It's their favorite snack, man. They're killing all the raccoons, all those small mammals. That old ecosystem's getting eaten alive by those snakes. <clears throat> Maybe that's what we need to do. Always Irish snake hunters. And that's my YouTube that I stream live is me driving in the Everglades on them dirt roads with a spotlight, jumping out, grabbing a snake. <laughs> Can mongoose kill pythons? They try, Andrew. They're one of the only animals that are not afraid. And they will take one on. They are nasty. Yeah, those mongooses are one of the only things that will even try. Uh, Jay Carr, can't trust the ocean. No ocean for me. I'm with you there. I always enjoy going to the ocean because it makes me realize how little power humans have. We like to think we're bad humans and we have technology. We control everything. You go to the ocean and you experience the power of the ocean and you realize that we're not as powerful as we think we are and we can't control everything. So that the, the ocean is humbling in that way. Philosophically, I always appreciate it. It's a reality check. And after I almost drowned in the Pacific Ocean in San Diego, that's a story for another day. I legitimately almost drowned and got attacked by a shark. Not a story for today. I want to get back to football. But remind me of that one. I don't mess with the ocean ever since that time in San Diego. I literally thought it was the end. I, I'm not exaggerating on this one. I thought it was the end. Oh man. All right. Let's go to the callers here. Andrew, what's going on? 818-419. You're the next two coming up. What's going on, buddy? Hey, what's up, John? Welcome back, buddy. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's really frustrating, Andrew. Every time I go to Florida, big news breaks. I'm not able to be with you guys and and talk about it. Uh, I'm happy to go wherever you are because I have some catching up to do wherever you're at. Well, I'll just say I'm glad that you uh, don't have to pay for your place in Florida. I was talking to one of my colleagues and he was saying that 
going to Florida on spring break is like more expensive than flying to Europe. So it's, it's pricey out there. So yeah, it is. Um, my brother settled out there and then my parents did wanted to do like, be able to be in Illinois when it's nice and then go there when it's bad, you know, weather, that kind of thing. Um, and so it's, and it's quiet, man, just North of Palm beach. It's quiet. You're out of the touristy part. It's peaceful. Nice, man. Well, hey, um, yeah, I want to hit on what you talked about earlier, injuries, because, uh, you know, typically when I call in, I, I can be really, really critical of Marcus Freeman, but I, I do have to show some empathy because um, he played this offseason perfectly um, in terms of transfers he brought in, in terms of the coaching staff. You know, I, you know, a lot of people criticize the Stucky firing. Then he brings in a guy who, by all accounts, is, is well-respected, obviously Denbrock. And then for this to happen, I mean, I would argue if, um, John, if I told you two guys are going to get hurt in the spring, um, like, or if you had to, that two guys were going to get hurt in the spring, um, who would be the most impactful players on the team, I think you would probably pick Riley Leonard and, and Ben Morrison. I mean, would you not? Andrew, yeah. It, it, yes. Um, is there any part of you that thinks, though, this is really not ideal, but I already know Morrison knows what he's doing out there. And if you had to have this happen, do it now. And it's not that like on that one, is there that thought or is it like, man, he's not out there with the other guys and all that? Because with him. No, see, I, I, I actually have the, the exact opposite. OK, um, um, because um, the, the reasoning behind that and, and I, I honestly, I feel like sometimes Notre Dame fans can be so naive. And, and it's, the reason why I say that is, like, um, I used to be really good friends with uh, an All-American uh, Notre Dame player named Shane Walton. He, he comes from San Diego as well. He was really nice to my family, and I was able to strike up a good friendship with him. And one of his biggest regrets is that he got injured during the uh, after his senior year. He got injured while he was training for the combine, and uh, he never was at full strength, uh, in his, you know, few years in the NFL. And that, 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 that was one thing that he, he talked about how that's like a huge regret for him. Yeah. So I think people forget how important it is that help, like, especially if you're a guy like Ben Morrison, who right now has a end of the first round, beginning of the second round grade in the draft. And in my opinion, unless he just goes off or gets a really good, um, coach, like for the, the draft and he somehow runs a faster 40 time, I think that Ben Morrison can only hurt his draft stock right now, not necessarily improve it. He's not going to be more physical. He's, he's never been a super physical tackler or anything like that. He's, he's got speed, but he's not like a speed demon. Like, I just don't think that he can even improve his draft stock. So when, when I find out that he, he's got an injury, you have to think, like, look, look at what hap what, what's happened over the last few years. Like, remember that Jackson Smith uh, Najigba? He was the, yep. uh, the big-time wide receiver for Ohio State. Yep. That guy, very very similar grade to, um, to Morrison, a middle-of-the-first-round type talent. What, he caught five balls? He played in, like, three games, caught five balls uh, that year, um, two years ago. And then you think about Kyle Hamilton, who at least you got something out of Kyle Hamilton, a guy who played, like, eight or nine games for, for Notre Dame that year, and then he, then he got hurt and totally shut it down. I just worry that, listen, I don't worry about Mekin. I think he knows what he's doing. My issue is, I, I, and I, I think it's disrespectful for anybody to say that you can replace Ben Morrison's um, value and production on the team. I don't care how good the guys are coming up. He's a first-round talent, and I think with Ben Morrison on the field, the decent corner on the other side, it allows Al Golden to call that, that defense that he loves to call, which is basically just man-to-man -man coverage, and then he blitzes the two linebackers constantly. When you take Morrison away, I mean, you saw against Clemson, when they pulled Morrison and Hart off the field, it was a different defense. So I, I just think that um, it's a huge blow, and you really got to hope that Ben Morrison, um, this is totally not serious, and that he's got the right mindset. Because uh, you can, like, if anybody were to criticize him for thinking about shutting it down, is is not living in, in the real world. Because when you got a first round grade, uh, you know, for the NFL, and your dream is to play in the NFL, you have to consider doing that. But that, that's what I Ooh. worry about. Oh, man. That didn't even enter my brain. Him being the type of guy that would make that calculation. Honestly, that didn't even enter my I mean, brain but, yet. But even, it if didn't. Was, if, even if he was that type of guy, it, like I, what I hate about fans is they never put themselves in, in that guy's shoes. Like Think about my buddy Shane Holm, all-American uh, cornerback. 
and he got drafted in the fourth round. He injured, he, he ruptured a disc in his mm-hmm. back, and he was never the same and never never really got an opportunity to play in the NFL. Yeah, Your health is so important to you if, if, if that's your goal. So I just think that that has to be a calculation. I'm not saying he's going to shut it down. I'm just saying that that's the first thing I thought about because I'm like, why would this guy risk his entire career? You know what I mean? Like, I, I just think about that stuff. Yeah, yeah man, that that's rough, especially because it, it's like his natural only third year. You know what I mean? Like that. Man, I didn't even I didn't even play that that part out. Um, Andrew, can I switch over to quarterback? I have not talked to any of you guys about this. How do you think Notre Dame should and will navigate the quarterback situation given the circumstances now? And I say that because it could be different. How they should do it and how they will do it are maybe two different things to you. What do you think this does to that room the rest of spring and then starting in August? I I just, I don't know where you guys are coming from. Well, all I have to say is The people who are saying that this is a good thing because some of these other guys can get first team reps, um, I I just think they don't know what the hell they're talking about. I mean, like I'm just, I I just, Andrew, it's a cope. That's a Notre Dame cope, man. Because, and I admit, I sat there and thought of that too. Like this is obviously inconvenient and not ideal, not good. I was trying to find any silver lining and then you could, uh, you, you're like, well, the other guys are going to get more competitive reps. Like that's all like it sucks, but that's the most bright side I could come up with. Yeah. I, and I just think that, um, like, again, I can be critical of Marcus Freeman and then like basically 95% of the chat just loves Marcus Freeman and he, he can't do anything wrong. He's like the best talent evaluator in the world. So if you believe he's like this great talent evaluator who's got this just eye for stuff, how is that? How is him immediately like back channeling for Riley Leonard even before the season was over? Basically, um, how is that not an indicator that he does not believe Angeli's the guy number one, and that Minchie and Carr yeah. are not going to be ready for this year? Yeah, I mean that's got to be the biggest indicator out there. Yeah. I mean he and Joe Caduli basically made that calculation. This guy <laughs> See, ain't the guy, Andrew. And that, so it's, oh it's, my it's god. Dude, you're, you're, that's so logical that people miss it. Does that make sense? Like, like, like when they told you what they thought of the other guys and where they were at by doing this, like some of that calculation was baked into the cake that made you go down this path to get an outside, not an inside guy. People don't always think of that. Like that calculation was made. It wasn't neutral. Get Riley Leonard. Then we do the calculation. Some of that was already baked in what they think and think about it that way. But I do. I mean, Gadouli has been watching Angeli for a full year now. You know, if he thought Angeli was the guy when he, when he staked his reputation on him, I mean, that doesn't that guy want, to be an offensive coordinator for a major school, like what better way would it be to take an Angeli and like win 11 games with him? Like then people would be lining up to make it, uh, Gino know, Julia an offensive coordinator. I think that when you get a rental like Riley Leonard, you know, people think, well, do you even get credit for that? You know what I mean? So, so like he is, it would be in his total, all, all in his interest to develop a guy like Angeli. And he, he looked at him and said, he's a backup quarterback. So, so my opinion is this, it, it's that, if Riley Leonard has a pulse, if Riley Leonard can put um, weight on his, you know, on his injured ankle, he started in week one at College Station. I, I don't care what anybody says, and I totally disagree with uh, Goolsby that A and M ain't anything. Like I, I'm not going to be one of these hyperbolic people to say that A and M is like a contender or anything like that. But the last time I checked, I follow um, SEC football, and talent has never been a problem at Texas A and M during the Jimbo <laughs> Fisher era. It was player discipline, which Mike Elko, we all know that guy knows how to get discipline on a football team. It was player discipline and it was poor offensive coaching, offensive coaching. Like Jimbo Fisher was supposedly this offensive guru, but if you really look at his career, he had success 20 freaking years ago with LSU. And then he had one quarterback that, that was, uh, that knew how to run his offense, Jameis Winston. And that guy was like a generational college talent. Everybody else has not been really that great under his offense. 
it was slow, it was prodding, and it just not, and he refused to update it. And so he's gone now, and they're bringing in that guy, uh, Klein, from Kansas City, and that guy kind of knows what he's doing. So I, 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 there's no excuses for Freeman. He's got to win this football game. But I just think that we have no idea what, what you're playing against at Texas A&M. Freeman's not dumb. He knows they're talented. So he's going with Bradley Leonard. I don't care what anybody says. <clears throat> so, uh, Andrew, like, okay. Truly can't go. Really, yeah. really interesting to me. How would you set up August camp? It Like, is it clean slate? Riley Leonard's healthy. He starts number one reps in August? Or does it have to go to whoever runs the operation this spring and start there? And if Riley Leonard overtakes yeah. that guy, he overtakes that guy. I genuinely don't know how the staff would look at this. And my whole thing with this, this Riley Leonard thing is, I don't know whether I'm overdoing it or underdoing the importance and significance of it. How do you think they're going to start that? If Riley Leonard's healthy, he's the number one automatically, or do you, do you have an obligation to give it to the guy who guides you through spring and develops along with the other guys through spring? I don't know the answer. Am I overthinking it? I think the only I think the only way Riley Leonard is not taking the lion's share of the first team snap is because he can't do it because of the physical limitation. If he's, if he can, if he, if that, if this third, geez, third ankle surgery, Ooh. uh, you know, actually does what it's supposed to do. Ooh. Um, then, then he's going to take it because he needs all the, all the reps. And, and I, I just think that Freeman doesn't care if he telegraphs to the world that Riley Leonard's his quarterback. He, yeah. Everybody already knows that right. if Riley Leonard can go. He's, he's going to go. And then by the way, just to get it back to Morrison, what a perfect example of Riley Leonard is dude was like, is trending toward being a, a decently uh, drafted quarterback. He tries to do the right thing for his team, come back, play injured against Florida state. And maybe has now damaged his career off because if his ankle does not fully heal, like he's not going to play in the NFL. So it's just like, it just shows you that like sometimes just playing injured for your team is, is just a bad move for your career. But, but getting back to him, I, I would just say that if he can go, he's 100% going to go. I think Goolsby is just like, just has a pipe dream about Minchie. And in fact, I think Minchie is the odd man out. He's got no ally on that coaching staff. The guy who recruited him at the end, Tommy Reese, is long gone. Gino, I, was, I don't even think Gino Gazzulli was there when, when, he, <clears> when he signed a letter of intent. You got Jen Brock, who doesn't care about anybody. but And then you got um, Freeman, whose prized possession was, was that guy, Carr. Yeah. Carr was the prized guy. And then, and quite frankly, the guy that the, in their 2025 class, Deuce Knight, that guy's even a bigger recruit than Carr. So the idea that Minchie, like Minchie better go out and just like swing it and ball yeah. because other than that, he, he's, he's, he's the odd man out. So, and, yeah. And that was one of my takeaways. The, that was one of my takeaways in the aftermath of this is if Minchie's going to make noise, this is a golden opportunity because you're naturally, everybody's going to click. <laughs> everybody's going to click up a notch now in as far as opportunities and if you're going to make a move, now would be the time Minchie, to make a move. <clears throat> the only way Minchie plays at Notre Dame is it's got to be sort of like what happened with Deshaun Kaiser. Like, if you remember how Kaiser went, like, Everett Golson impl imploded. And then, um, basically, Kelly was like, you ain't the guy. And you're gonna, and he transfers to Florida State. Then Mal Malik Zaire steps up, who was really the backup quarterback, has a decent bowl game. He played as the starter, gets injured in the second week of the year. And then all of a sudden, the guy who is, like, deep on the depth chart is now your starting quarterback. And then Kaiser, you know, like was clearly, uh, you know, a, a guy who performed in the game, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. who knows what he was doing in practice. He was the third string guy. And so, he, uh, so I think that the only way Minchie ever plays is like, there's just enough injuries that get him in there. But I personally think I, I played for a really, really competitive high school football team. It can be very political when it comes to who's playing. Mm -hmm. um, even in high school, let mm -hmm. alone the pros. I mean, let alone in college football. Yeah. So, like, he's got no natural ally on the team uh, in terms of the coaching staff. And uh, Carr is is the is the golden boy right now for for the young guys. And then um, and then uh, then Riley Leonard's the golden boy because they're paying him two million dollars to come in and play. So yeah. Yeah. I just think Minchie, the only way he plays is if a domino effect. Man, uh, Andrew, this the quarterback thing is really it's got to be driving Freeman nuts. You know, year one that you didn't even know was going to be good, even if he was healthy all year, didn't even last two games. 
Last year, you thought you had this safety blanket who ended up, we ended up pretty much in the same spot with the, you know, the quarterback not able to put the team on his back. It's not just his fault. Slow down. I know it's not all just Sam's fault, but he wasn't able to put the team on his back and get over the hump. And then you go do Riley Leonard. And then now it's, he's injured. And it's got to be really frustrating, man. Every time I feel like Notre Dame has a plan and I can like see it and it's clear, something gets messed up. So I just don't know whether yeah, I'm overdoing it or underdoing it. I don't know. That, that's why I had empathy for Freeman on that because um, he played the offseason totally right. And then he, there's no way he could predict it that yeah. um, Leonard's ankle would not take to the surgeries because it. I don't know. I mean, I, I've heard people talk about it. Like Malik Zaire talked about having a similar injury and his ankle never recovering. But we've certainly seen quarterbacks have ankle injuries and come back from it. Um, and then even more serious injuries. Like didn't Lamar Jackson tear his ACL? You'd think that that would just slow him down. Yeah. So, and and it, my, I the, wanna, Andrew, and the want, other thing but, is the way he plays quarterback is a part of this too. Like when you're a dual guy that likes to run and take those hits, I even look at that differently than if it's just like a drop back guy. And if you keep him upright, he, the mobility isn't the biggest part. Like that's the part that's in my brain. Like I have no doubt he's going to recover, but it's the durability moving forward after that, that I'm it's in the back of my mind. I'm nervous about. So it, it's just another we, we, bad luck, not ideal situation. Well, if he gets injured, you just better hope that Goolsby's right. Cause Minji, uh, Minji's like a dude, because uh, I, I just don't see Angeli starting for, for the whole season. Um, Man. But uh, hey, I just want to I just want to um, end on this um, and, and get your take probably off the air is you know you talk about like hey how Notre Dame is just totally elevating their roster under Freeman and how and then you even coined the term Freeman factor but like from what I read on the message board uh, earlier the, or uh, this weekend Shanklin the the the, the number one D line prospect for uh, or target for Notre Dame trending in the you know away from Notre Dame and so. That's going to be 0 for 3, and you could say 0 for 4 for Al Washington if you if you include uh, Elijah Rushing, uh, but I, let's not even include Elijah Rushing. 0 for 3 uh, in, in terms of top targets, and so my question to you is, is Al Washington like he just can't he can't close like the big time prospects? It's Where's the Freeman factor in closing uh, these guys? And then and then and my real question is, they need to, are they um, just missing the boat on NIL? Because if, if Al Washington is supposedly this dynamic recruiter and Freeman is, but they cannot land these top 50 D-line uh, recruits, then then cut these guys a check if they're interested in going to Notre Dame. Yeah, it's part like of it. Like five champions. That's yeah. a part of it yeah. is they're not, they don't do that for the regular recruits. Like they're not looking at high school guys guaranteeing them a bunch of money. Like that's not their NIL thing. They're saying – get in here, show us you're a good dude doing your schoolwork and a good, a good citizen. And then those opportunities will come to you. They have not been doing it the way of like promising that to a high school recruit that commits. Maybe they need to change that. And then the problem with evaluating. Maybe, maybe look at, look at who's won the championship the last few years. Well, it's true. It's like Georgia won two championships in a row, largely because their D line was unstoppable. Yeah. Yep. You, you have Michigan. Yep. Winning it, winning a championship. Now I get a lot of those guys weren't recruited, but whatever Michigan's doing, they're making those guys into a first round draft pick. So yeah. um, I just think D line. Like I'm a huge proponent of Bill Parcells. Like that guy built his team by pass rush. It was like, and then I think about when I was a San Diego Charger fan in the, the late 2000s. Like everybody thinks about Philip Rivers and Ladini Tomlinson, great uh, Pro Bowl type play, or um, Hall of Fame type players. But when San Diego Chargers were competing. They had Sean Merriman coming off the edge and getting 16 sacks. Like, that's a game changer for your team. So it's just like, if Notre Dame isn't going to recruit well at D-line, you better hope Mickens can replace uh, Ben Morrison every year because uh, they're in big trouble. Yeah. Uh, here's the question about Washington that I have. I feel like that D-line outplayed what I thought they would be last year. I just personally thought they outplayed kind of where I thought they'd be. How do you balance me well, who's well who's who's playing though like you you really are going to give him credit for howard cross and Riley mill like they, those guys are like super seniors and then you and then two years in a row he's, he's got to go to the portal to get like the the pass rushing defensive end 
I mean, that's, that scares me a little bit. Like they don't have some bean on sophomore that like can, can rush the passer off the edge. And then the big litmus test is if Jordan Vitelho starts again as the, as the fourth D lineman, uh, that dude did next to nothing last year for Notre Dame. The the only big plays Patelho has ever made on Notre Dame is, is on punt. He yeah. blocked a couple punts, which were pretty <laughs> awesome. But he hasn't done anything when he when he's in the game. And so if that guy's starting, then you realize we, we got a big problem in terms of depth. Like how are these like these sophomores, these four star sophomores uh, and juniors now? How are they not beating out Jordan Patelho, who who literally does nothing? Yeah. <laughs> Well, when you paint that pretty picture, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, I don't know. Oh, wait, where am I wrong though? Where, yeah. where am I wrong though? You know what I mean? Like, like we, if if he's if he's built this depth chart, it's like we need to start seeing these young guys eventually, right? Yeah, yeah, you would hope so. I, it, it, it's man, I I don't know. There's like when you look at this, I. I was really, you can't strike out all of this year. That's the problem. Like you kept naming guys that were just not in it for anymore. I mean, what do you do though, Andrew? Like, are you advocating like, it's not good enough. We got to go another direction. I don't know. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not even suggesting that. And and I'll give you, like, I'll, I'll back you up that, that, okay, that D-line did perform really well. But maybe Al Washington is a better coach. Cause like the selling point on him was, We'll take a step back from Mike Elsing because that dude to like actually coach, but he wasn't a great recruiter. Yeah. But we're gonna get Al Washington, who's probably not the greatest coach in the world, but that guy's like gonna get talent. And it's like, and I and I hate to hit on him because he, I mean, uh, I was really talking smack on him on on a message board, and then some people made some good points. Like he has landed like very decent four star recruits. I think the issue is like he shoots for the stars um, in terms of top targets. And they're always like a viper or something like that. And he can never land those guys. So I get really concerned about like, where's the pass rush going to come from? And then Notre Dame's recruiting strategy is like, we keep stacking these awesome linebackers. And it's just like, maybe I guess you're, the idea is like, these are great athletes and we can to yeah. like D line and, and stuff like that. But, but it's just like, you only play two linebackers. Can't you just get a traditional off the corner off the edge like pass rusher like I, wouldn't that be awesome like if we got someone like that like like we just don't do that really uh, we we have logan thomas he'll be really good i'd be interested to find out what bryce young turns into i think he's gonna get so big he'll be more of an interior uh lineman but i just i get worried so no nah, hey that's fair hey i can never tell anybody it's not right to have notre dame worries about anything like i'm totally open to that andrew um, so man, we covered a lot of ground. We got caught up on a lot of things. Um, yeah, I, I can't blame you if you're worried about that, the, the, where the depth is and where the pass rush is coming from and what the future looks like there. Like, I understand that. I think that's, that's fair. Um, and then Andrew, I'll just wrap up on this. Uh, it's really funny for me to see on Twitter, like a lot of people are like, oh, Notre Dame doing really good 2025. You go on Rivals 247, they're number one, whatever. And then, but then a lot of people here are like, this recruiting class is garbage and it's falling off. It's just really funny to me to see the dichotomy because I've been getting messages about both ways that the 25 class is not good at all. And then other people are like, they're really stacking talent and building depth. It, like, where are the realities, man? Well, I, I'll just end on this because someone said that uh, say something positive. Uh, Dalen McCullough is something positive. Like he's building a running back room that might be one of the best running back. Like we may look at this year's running back room and say this might be one of the best running back rooms in Notre Dame history. Yeah, that, that guy Jadarian Price. I, I like supposedly Love is faster than him. If he's faster than Price, then like that is ridiculous because I saw Price run that uh, kick return back against you. Let's see. Yeah. The so, problem is, Andrew, oh, be- God, the problem is, I think he's going to be a head coach at a lower level school next year. That's the problem I have. People have already been coming after I'm him. I got a that. feeling he's going to be gone after this year. That's the issue I have with that. Aeneas, Aeneas Williams or whatever might be better than Keegan Young. Like, so it's just like, this is a ridiculous running back room. So um, I'll end on that. Yep. Hey, man, I really appreciate uh, touching base with you. And uh, we made up for about a week there. You have some fair concerns. And it, I, I mean, I'm never going to be satisfied with Notre Dame's D-line depth being as good at, at, at the front line or the depth as it needs to be because it hasn't been for a while. 
it's a fair, a fair complaint and a fair worry, Andrew. Thanks a lot for touching base when I'm back. I appreciate it. Yeah, hey, sorry for taking up so much time. I really appreciate it. Hey, we have, have a good one, man. That's okay. We had a lot to keep up on. That's like a, a three different calls into one. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Um, man, some of you guys. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm trying to trying to get back into this and and ease back into it. Some of you guys are not allowing that to happen. Brutal, brutal. What? I don't know what you want me to say. Oh, John, you're defending Freeman and he's perfect. What? If you tell me you feel like D line recruiting hasn't been good enough and needs to get better and we need more depth and better high end impact guys, I'll say. Sure, I agree with you. I don't understand how that like proves that I'm wrong about Notre Dame football. I don't understand that. Like, like I'm over here, bro. I don't understand. Way to absolutely smash John's narrative, caller. I don't under I don't understand what you're saying. Am I Commander Luke? Where is the episode I did over the last week or whatever where I said, you know what I love more than anything else? Notre Dame is just nailing it at defensive line and everything's awesome and they're nailing it and the depth is good and they have high-end guys and they're nailing their top recruiting targets and it's awesome and it's... Like, I don't ever remember saying that. So I don't under... It's not some big gotcha. I would not tell you I'm... so. Name for me the place where I said, oh, all that D-line stuff's exactly where I want it and I'm comfortable with that. You can't, but you want to make it a big deal and you want to create division, not division between us and other fan bases, internal division. So whatever. Yeah, good call by Andrew, but it like I, <laughs> it isn't the way you're making it. It's just not the way you're making it. $5 from Charlie Weiss's last belt loop. Gosh, that last loop needs some help. Uh, the recruiting class, number one, because they load up early. It'll be 10, 12 when signing day happens. Let's be real. The class is falling off. Uh, that I mean, we're not going to. I mean, I understand how that works. I say that every year. That's something I do complain about every year is Notre Dame being ranked in the top five or six for all these months and we feel comfortable. And then right when it matters, we drop like a rock in your 15th. Not good enough. Not good enough. And people say I never uh, hold Freeman accountable or whatever. The, he needs to recruit at a much better level than top 12, 14, 15 to hold up his part of the deal. A part of the deal of getting Freeman in here as the head guy with no experience is you have to be a good recruiter to make up for that lack of experience you have right off the bat. We got to see that crank up a little bit. Crank up a little bit. But thank you for the message, uh, Belt Loop. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. All right, we're going back to the calls. Uh, Deuce Knight is ranked 10 at his position in the 25 class. The guy isn't what John builds him up to be. Again, you have selective hearing. You only hear what you want to push to be the opposite of my opinion. That's what you do. You have selective hearing, and then you pick the things that you think can make me look dumb or get me mad. This isn't what John builds him up to be. What I've built him up to be and what I've said every minute I talked about Deuce Knight is, he is nowhere near a polished quarterback prospect. Athletically, Notre Dame hasn't seen anything like that at the quarterback position in my lifetime. That's what I've said. And I'm not going to let you spin it and turn it on me. Okay. So I don't understand. The guy isn't what John builds him up to be. I've never said he's a polished quarterback, plug and play, ready to go. No. My argument's been Deuce Knight has the physical attributes at quarterback that we never, ever, ever have. A guy that physically gifted at that position we never have. We never have. That doesn't mean he's a polished quarterback right now. I'm just telling you that athletic ceiling makes 
a lot of things possible that aren't with a lot of our quarterbacks. Let's go back to the calls. 818 and 419 coming up. 818, Rodney, what's going on, buddy? <clears throat> Age. <laughs> Happy uh, April Fool's Day to uh, to you and yours and Always Irish Nation and our group and all of those things. I got a couple things that nah, – nah, nah, it's not like a, a prank because I'm just I'm putting it right out there right away, but – I was thinking a lot about what Andrew was saying, and I was reading what Commander Luke is saying, and I'm like, okay, these two guys represent, very, hear me out now, very kind of pessimistic sides of Notre Dame football, and one does it in the Luke troll walker way, and the other one does it in the Luke sky troller way, <laughs> meaning a little more new, a little more intelligence and up here about it. Always interesting to hear Andrew, but my God, you always take the negative on things, man. <laughs> but it is in a way that does get you to think about these things. So he kind of gives you like, here's the, here's the spectrum of what Nordian football could be. Here's what happens if we were, here, here's what, if this happens the, on the negative side. And that's fair. So now let me balance that out because, oh my God, I, ha I just, I, it's hard to say I disagree because they always make really, really, really intelligent points about things. Um, but it's like, okay, I see, I see that way of looking at it. But now let, let's look at it this way. Okay, first of all, Freeman bringing in Riley Leonard can only be a positive. Now, whether you want to say the money they invest through NIL, however that goes down, is... Uh, Whatever you want to say about that. The bottom line is bringing in another person can only help the room from a competitive standpoint. With Haley Leonard being injured, well, unfortunately that happened. But if he is injured, if he is not healthy, we obviously want as much out of the backup as we can possibly get. And him not being there, to, now again, to get a head start in the playbook, fine. I get how there's advantages to that, but I don't think it's as big of an advantage as people are saying. And I would personally, especially if, you know, going back to the Goldsby stuff and, and saying, you know, we'll, we'll, we will all see if Minchie's what Goldsby said, right? We'll have that chance. But if he is, oh yeah, I want to see Minchie and, 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 um, my God, and Jelly go at it, you know, and Carl for that matter. And it's like, Okay, I actually do think this is a positive because if he comes back in the fall and he's ready to go, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. He'll adapt. He'll get it. You know, but I still don't think he's going to start every game. I just feel like he's probably going to, you know, this yeah. is just, <clears throat> if you're going to have a running quarterback at all, John, that's a, that's a scare that, that maybe even a couple games of the year, he may not be there. So anyway, I've been long winded, but I just want to say, I think it's an advantage ring that this has happened. I, it's a happy accident. The fact that he went out and, and got Riley Leonard in the first place. Think about this, way, John. Think of the perception of it like this. Let's say we didn't know anything about Riley Leonard coming in. Let's say Freeman did decide just to stick with the room that he has got. Okay. And then we found out after spring, uh, oh, I'm just saying if this could happen, hypothetically. Riley Leonard is coming to Notre Dame in the fall. We would, would we not be completely happy with that and be like, oh, wow, now that brings us to another level. We've already felt that way because it was already announced. And now we're looking at the, I'm just saying, man, like I am not nearly as I think this is absolutely an advantage because it really gives an honest chance for Minchie and Angeli as human beings to want to prove their mettle. And we'll see, man. We will see it play out in real time. We'll at least get a, you know, again, people overrate the spring, underrate the fall, but the, the fall is where it's all going to come together anyway. Um, but yeah, man, I just want to take like, like that. It was such a pessimistic way of looking at it. I get what he's saying. I do. Uh, but that's only, but that's the spectrum. That's the, yeah, that's the, that's kind of the spectrum over here. But the other way of it is, and that doesn't necessarily mean that, by the way, Freeman wanted four quarterbacks in that room anyway. I mean, so it's like, why not take Leonard? You know what I mean? If you have the money, you know, you can, again, risk reward and say, oh, Notre Dame, you know, they lost out on that one if it doesn't work out. But it's like, well, obviously they wouldn't have spent it if they didn't have the money to lose. So I'm not, I think they're worried about that. 
But the bottom line is, bringing in another guy, how's that a bad thing? And then, okay, he's not there. Okay, we got these quarterbacks that we think are talented that and, and could possibly uh, be the guy. How is that an advantage going into fall with an even more experienced backup room? I, I don't know. That's my take on it. Yeah, I, I think you could... I, here's the thing. I think there's multiple sides to a lot of the things we're talking about. There's a spectrum. Yeah. And and like a spectrum range of outcomes, a spectrum, like, yeah, I totally get that. Um, and I'm not, listen, man, it's a little wild to me how the biggest argument against me on my show all through the Kelly air was glass half empty. Oh, nothing's good enough. Always complaining. And then now the biggest argument against me now that Freeman's here and people know I have an affinity for him is that I never criticize him. And I always think he's perfect or whatever. I, the realities are probably in the middle somewhere on a lot. He's like not all one way, not on the other. And when you're making an argument either for or against something or to prove a point, you're going to lean on, you're going to lean on the evidence that, that, that proves your point that you're bringing to the table. Like I, I get that. I get that. Listen, did I think an Oak Freeman's recruiting was going to be um, a little more on the high end of landing more like really, really high end guys? A few more? I genuinely did. I thought he would have better success so far landing a few more really high end guys. And we haven't seen that as much as I wanted. At the same time, right. the process, Notre Dame's recruiting process has refined and gotten a lot there's a lot more action going on. There's a lot more going on. So I'm kind of caught in the middle on that one. I'm just caught in the middle of, on that one. But, but it, it blows my mind though, Rodney, I was too negative on Kelly all the time. And then now I have a reputation. I'm never going to criticize Freeman when all I've said is he's got to get better. He's got to get better at everything he's doing in game stuff. Like all of that, like the recruiting, he's got to get better. Freeman's not a finished product. So I don't know what else people want from me. Not a finished product. Got to get better in all areas. All right. Here's the thing. And you're right. hundred percent. Okay. But and again, there's a spectrum to that too. And you know what I mean? It's like, look, we're, where it feels like he's headed. Let's talk about just about where it feels, okay? And what he's done so far. What Freeman has shown me is here's a guy who, first of all, is humble enough to understand that he does not know everything and he needs people around him that do. When things have failed, they've been replaced with people that are generally more experienced, uh, you know, in the, coach, in, uh, the coaches he's had. Um, the other thing about Freeman is when he – Get something wrong, he generally doesn't get it wrong twice. Again, you, there's some things you're going to get wrong. He he makes it a point to get better at that thing. Yeah. That's what I've seen so far. I see improvement happening on the field. He's getting better athletes. He's picking what it is he's doing. And, John, this is interesting you brought that. I'm so glad that, that, that was brought up, too, because I was going to forget to talk about that. I think in a large part, the recruiting of that, again, there's another way of looking at it here. He is doing what I was hoping Kelly was going to do, meaning recruit in the top 10, right? Get that lower tier of the top 10 or whatever you want to call it. But you've got such, you're such, you know, you get the right coaches around them, the right development, and you've got a team that, you know, you basically you're recruiting to, your needs and you're recruiting to your team's uh, chemistry, basically, as much as anything, not just getting the great athletes. The problem is that doesn't always work with Kelly. You know, it didn't always gel the way we wanted to see it gel. Um, you know, one side of the ball always being better than the other side, we always that happened. And he was never particularly great on special teams with the exception. He always had a good kick, uh, generally good kicker. But, you know, it's like he did have a couple of good returners, but then he kind of got away from that later when – Anyway, I don't get into all that, but Freeman seems to be doing what we hoped Kelly would do with the caveat put in there. Is either going to get better at that, okay, which I think he is getting better at that because they start winning more. They, they, it's just going to be a slow That's what I said, John. He got hired. It's going to be a slower process, largely because it's going to be a slower process getting the Notre Dame higher up to coalesce with 
his vision, which I think is what's really been holding Notre Dame back the whole time. Everybody puts it on Brian Kelly. I always defend him in that regard. Yes, correct about the personality. But Ryan Kelly was trying to do it too. It's just he didn't have the personality to get it done. And Freeman seems to have that. Okay, so it's like he and it's happening, by the way. It's happening. But it's that's why it's going slower because he's got to bring them with him at the same time. And it's happening. And I'm thinking those recruiting classes are just going to get slightly better. I don't think they'll ever reach, I don't say ever, that's such, but I, it's going to be hard for them to consistently recruit in the top three. But I think they can be a top five to seven caliber once he gets it really going and, uh, and he brings that administration along like it seems he's doing. And, you know what I'm saying, John? But I don't see yeah. it getting much worse yeah. than this recruiting-wise because I think he's just such a more tenacious recruiter that even at – if Notre Dame, you know, started, let's, I can, if they started being eight and five and nine and four all the time, yeah. you know, I still think he'd probably keep it around where it's at, but don't expect it to stay here. I think it's going to keep getting better, but he is trying to recruit guys that fit what he's, his vision is as a coach. And he's getting the best guys for or guys that are very, very, have a high end of um, room to a high ceiling. Yeah, these are guys with like four stars with a high ceiling or three stars with a high ceiling. You know oh, what I mean? Man, and Rodney, you know, it's just so much, so much Notre Dame nuance here. There's just so many yeah. different ways you can interpret things. I, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. What Andrew said was correct, or, or could be correct, or maybe correct. Like I said, just the the way he brings it up is <laughs> he basically but, said the same thing in some ways <laughs> as Cody. Or Luke, I'm sorry, Commander Luke or whatever it was. Uh, Luke Trollwalker. Uh, it's like, but he just, he's like, okay, let's look at, let's talk about it like this, though. You know, and he kind of holds it up here and he's like, oh, okay, that's interesting. And I'm just giving you what the other side is. All in the middle could happen, but I'm saying, man, it certainly looks like the floor has very much been risen at Notre Dame right now. The floor seems to have been risen. And, we're, and, and the ceiling seems to also be higher. So it's like, I feel like it's getting better, man. We just, because this is the third year, we, it the kind of the year that shows us, okay, are we really like, if they just improve again, then it's probably likely the evidence will show that we're going, we're keep getting better. But if this year, all of a sudden we fall back again, then it's going to be like, okay, are we yeah. just going to be always be a 10 and three, nine and 14. So we'll see. Yeah. And you see, can't, man. This man, year is very, very integral. That. Rodney, that's a good way to, when it all rolls in together and the and the rubber meets the road, this is a big year. And, and you're going to have a lot of Notre Dame fans buying in or being more negative. This is a big year. You have a blend of a roster that has a decent amount of veteran talent and then a decent amount of younger guys that could get in the mix. This needs to be the year. This needs to be the year you turn a corner and that you are able to show that you are taking steps forward every year. Like you got to be able to do that. And this is a big year for that man. Um, and, and so I listen, I mean, but dude, he, I get, I, love, it- I get all these complaints. I get all these complaints, but again, I don't understand why am I in the position where people are acting like I'm saying Freeman's perfect. Sun chance kid. Did we not have 10 men on the field multiple times last season? We did. And it's unacceptable. I don't know what else you want me to say. Did you ever hear me say, because I like Freeman's personality and his cool hair dudes, it's okay to blow the game. When did I ever say that? Just because I like him overall doesn't mean I'm saying everything he did was good enough. Welcome back from vacation. Uh, yeah, I agree, man. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you, you, I've, I've always thought you've been very, you're very passionate and very emphatic about your Notre Dame, but you, I don't think you've but ever just, been but, 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 but just uh, because I, sometimes you can lean pessimistic. In my opinion, you can lean, <laughs> not even pessimistic, really. You just kind of like you're, you're just worried. You're, you always are worried, John. You know what I mean? I'm, I, I, I worry just a little less probably because it's not, I, you know, this is through your life now. This is what you do all the time. So you kind of have to, but John, you're a lot more optimistic than people give you credit for, man. You're a, a lot more. It doesn't think, feel that Freeman? way. It doesn't feel that way, but I don't well, understand. I but Freeman's but what do people anyway, want me to do? Brought it out in you a little bit. But what do people, I think Freeman's brought it he out has, bit. and you, I don't know what people want me to do. It feels like I'm in a position where people know that I I 
approve of Freeman's <laughs> person personality a lot more <laughs> than Kelly's. But that doesn't mean that he's perfect. That doesn't mean that I think he doesn't right. need to do anything different or improve. Like, that's what I don't get. I can, at a baseline, like the way this guy operates more than Kelly, but at the same time, say that he needs to get a lot better. I don't know why people can't see that those are connected. They're not conflicting. And, and, and you're right about the nature of it. But Rodney, let me, I don't want to forget this. The nature of the challenge. I don't want to forget this. You said you think that Freeman's, yeah. uh, you know, there's some optimism there and you've seen that from me. Here's what I'm going to say. Change. I needed change after Kelly because we did the same thing for so long, getting the same results. I needed change. And I have seen a lot of tangible differences in the program about how they go about things in the last few years. And that is giving me some hope that we're at least trying to build Notre Dame a little differently. And I, that gives me some excitement because I saw the way we were doing things before you were never going to get to a different level. At least now you're trying to do some different things. And I'm here for that. Uh, but that doesn't mean Freeman's perfect. He's got to improve in a lot of areas. I want to see that recruiting take an uptick and, and the dumb in-game stuff. Like, I don't understand why it, if I like him more than Kelly, that means that he's perfect. No, I've never said that. Well, and John, I don't think too that what you were saying about the recruiting, you thought it would be a little bit high. I'm with you 100%. I thought it would be a little bit higher too, but I don't think that has anything to do with what, he, you know, again, I'm not, he deserves criticism or criticisms do, but I can't find flaws in how he's recruiting. I can't so far. It's not, it's so I'm thinking it has things changed extremely quick a couple of years ago. And I think he had to adapt. He had to adapt to that change. And I think he's starting to now. And so he's like, you know, again, his highest class, I think was seventh. And, his, and I mean, since he's been with the team, regardless of head coach assistant, and his lowest, I think, is 11th. He's they basically recruiting between seven and 11. If they can raise that between five and eight, I think we got something there. Uh, you know, between four, you know, I think he can, he can get even in maybe we uh, four. I just can't see them finishing number one, number two. The way the, you can just you, the academics still have to matter. Character still has to matter. And I just think that, um, but they can get there, man. And they're, they're, that's the thing. They're getting there. They're, I don't think that we put back to back to back to back top 10 ish classes together since, I don't know, since <laughs> Lou Holtz. I mean, as far as like 10, top 10 classes, all four of them are ranked in the top 10. I think we haven't done that since Holtz. Yeah. Yeah. And his were top five generally, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's man. Li, li, anyway, listen, there, there, Rodney, there's a lot of nuance here. And, uh, and I just yeah, think you're, is. you need to be able to navigate the middle ground. The navigating the gray area is not a strong suit of Notre Dame fans. It seems to be all one way <laughs> or all the other on everything. And I see a lot of room in the gray areas with which to navigate with all this stuff. Um, I, it's just and really, really John, frustrating to John. me. It's frustrating to me where it's all or not that if, if people know you like Freeman's personality and the way he works more than Kelly, then they equate that of John's going to say that Freeman's perfect and cover form and he never needs to get better. When all I do is come in here and yell about how Notre Dame needs to get better. I don't get it. <laughs> That's well, it. I uh, need know, another well, vacation. Against, against I need it. Now I'm stressed out. Against, I need to go on vacation to relax. Damn it. You know? <laughs> you just got back from vacation, know, man. That's my back. point. I you're know. Right back in, man. You're like, yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, I know. probably your, you know, that, that all that pent up energy that you had to kind of restrain when you're trying to keep yourself calm so the golfers weren't, yeah, I know. you know, uh, thinking some lunatics over there yelling. So I, I get that. Um, on that, on that note, John, I'll let you go, man. I'll see you around the 20th. Man, God, for, for less than three weeks away, that'll be a lot of fun. Can't oh, wait. man, it's going to be really, really fun. I uh, can't wait to see everybody there. If we yeah. can get some decent weather, it would really wait. help. Give me some decent weather. Yeah. Yeah. I hope it's nice. I mean, you know, last, last, uh, 
Blue and Gold game was crummy, and I had a terrible day, as you know. Oh, yeah. But uh, all right, man. I'll see you later, John. Have a good one, guys. Thanks a lot. Take care. Oh, man. We, man, we just got right back into the mix, you guys. We're going with the full... Matt Miller, welcome to YouTube where everything you say gets misconstrued, read into, and manipulated by the masses. I genuinely want to ask this. Is every fan base this way? I've been on here an hour, what? An hour and 19 minutes, hour and 20 minutes today. Pat, good to see you, man. Looks like you're going to the airport. Where are you going again? Pat's going on vacation every week. Is this like this in every fan base? I'm open to the idea that I am sucked into this mold because this is my world and I'm and I'm doing a Notre Dame show that it, that's my vacuum world. But is it like this in every fan base? Literally, I go down the chats and some people are like, you're not giving Freeman enough credit for what he's doing. I think he's doing a good job. And other people are going, I, Freeman's not good at all. We can't recruit. It's all falling apart. He has no idea what he's doing. Is the reality probably somewhere in the middle of those? Isn't the reality somewhere in the middle of those? And again, I just ask you to, what is wrong with saying yes? I respect and admire and approve of the way Freeman works, like literal work ethic and communicates 100% more than I got on board with Kelly. But that doesn't mean that Freeman just gets a free pass. That's what I'm trying to get you guys to understand. Just because I like him more than Kelly doesn't mean he can just do whatever. I need a vacation from my vacation. It's always something here. It's always something here. <laughs> uh, John told us it'd be top five recruiting every year, and it's not. That's what I want it to be. That should be the goal. And if it isn't there... Then I'll say, you should probably try and find a way to get it there, right? Like, like again, I don't, I don't, where does this lead us? Where does this lead us? Is, is what, like, when you say that, John told us it'd be top five. So, so what is that? That's what I hoped it would be. Talked about it being the goal. You're not there. So then what? Then what? What? Like, I don't know what the point of, yeah, that's the goal. That's where I want it to be. That I, I wanted to set a high goal and we're not there yet. So that's something to improve upon and achieve moving forward. I don't know what else you want me to say. Unreal. I'm losing it. 419, you're on the line. What's going on? Hey, John, how was your trip? The trip was relaxing. Warm weather and uh, some cold Miller lights. It was nice. Glad to be back, though, with you guys. You enjoy some uh, good Southern cooking, like some frog legs down there? Oh, I didn't have no frog legs. What? You, come on, man. You didn't, <laughs> Come on, bro. Uh, I didn't. You know what? I had fish and chips. That's about as good as I could do for the fish. And it barely even counts because it's so fried and breaded. I'll have fish and chips. Everybody who thinks I'll never eat fish and all that because I'm so picky, I had fish and chips. But it's so, like, airy and crispy, it barely even counts as fish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh wanted to come on here and, uh, well, well, I'll address the quarterback situation first. Obviously, nothing ideal about letter yeah. going down, but I, you know me by now, I try to look at the bright side of things and even with him being uh, out of practice, he'll still be able to help some of these young guys. R and Angeli just uh, on the sidelines, and they no one. I know no one wants to hear this, but it is just those guys do get more reps. Yeah. Now, what is, about this? That is a positive. What thing. about this? 
And I didn't think about this initially. Goolsby brought it up to me. And he said, John, here's the big issue I have with this Riley Leonard thing. He said, I do not look at Riley Leonard as a polished, finished product. He is still developing and was going to go to college as a basketball recruit, not even football. He's he's pretty new at football. And Goolsby saying he needed spring to develop himself and chemistry with the team and whatever. But he needs to develop more of his own skill set aside from that. And now you're missing all that. That's one of his big problems. Um, it, it's just not ideal. It's just not ideal. So what do you do then? You just try and see what the other guys have and look at it as an opportunity to see that depth and who emerges. Like I'm trying to look at a bright side out of it. I'm not going to sit here and just cry about it all spring. Let's see what these other guys could do. They're all getting a more of a chance. Yeah, we, the coaches will get a lot more looks at those guys. And when it comes to the spring game, we will get more looks at them. So I guess if there is a bright side to it, that is it. But it does suck because then being with a new team, all new receivers, that you got to get your timing down with with these with uh, these receivers. Yep. And he's losing valuable time on that. Yeah. So that is. Yeah, so, okay. So here's the question that I'm really interested. I've been trying to ask everyone. Um, if Riley Leonard heals from the surgery and then we get into August camp and he's clear, is he your number one guy taking reps right away in August? Or is it Angeli who's likely to be the guy that guided Notre Dame through spring and then Riley Leonard has to surpass him? How do you think the staff's going to approach that? I mean, they've basically been doing from what I've seen is 50-50 first rep uh, splits between Angeli and Riley already. So that's probably what they'll start with. But they, I think they'll also have the mindset of, like what, we, what we've been saying, Riley's here. He's our number one if he's healthy. Yeah. They will have that mindset. They won't announce it, right? of course, but they will have that mindset, but they will give them both 50-50 uh, split reps to start fall camp Yeah, as well. Um, and then what do you make of this Notre Dame recruiting argument? Um, they, the processes are changing. The processes are adapting and upgrading. I see that. Do I wish Notre Dame would end in, you know, rank six, seven, eight, somewhere there instead of 12 to 15, whatever? I certainly figure out how to get there. What do you make of Notre Dame's recruiting? Is it good enough right now or is it lacking to you? Did you expect a lot more meat on the bone from Freeman? Also, do you expect a bump if Notre Dame plays good and makes the playoff? Does that have more guys interested or does Notre Dame not work that way because of the academics and it's unique? What do you make of where we're at right now with that? You took the words right out of my mouth at the end there, but uh, it's kind of funny. I've actually been arguing for the past like three days with an LSU fan about, about uh, me too. <laughs> Mark Freeman's recruiting compared me. to Brian Kelly. Oh man. So uh, I've been saying, look, Kelly, you didn't know where the like. I I tend to look at overall co uh, class rating over rankings and all that. So like with Freeman, we've been in the two seventies all three of his classes. With Kelly, you didn't know you had his one good year after well, his one well, his best year, I should say, because he had some decent years. But uh, he had his best year after we made the national championship, which was like two eighty four or something like that. So. But then other than that, he had like some 250, some 260. So I was like, with Freeman, I like the consistency in the 270s. But we're not going to take that next step up into being one of the top five, six, seven, eight yeah. uh, recruiting classes until we do something on the yeah, field. Yeah, I think you might be right so, about that. Like to give you that little extra boost, you know, to get one or two more guys that are more interested in you if you're over that edge of being more competitive. Um, and then here's the other thing I see though. I value the work a lot more than a lot of Notre Dame fans do. I value the work, meaning I was always criticizing Kelly recruiting because he didn't try hard and we were where we were. Like at yeah. least Freeman's trying hard. Freeman's getting back into the Chicago area, opening up those pipelines. Freeman's going way down south where the only time Kelly would see the high school that 
Deuce Knight's at is if he was flying over it to get to a golf course. They're trying to open up more and new recruiting avenues. Like I see all that stuff, but if it doesn't correlate to big time winning on the field, Notre Dame fans are going to say that it's not good enough. And I understand that, but I'm, I'm in a frustrated place because I see a lot of these things change. It doesn't end with different results in the field. I can't blame anybody for going, okay, you did it all different and you ended up in the same spot. So who cares? I understand that. I understand that. I certainly understand. I understand that too. And yeah, I appreciate the work Freeman's doing. Like it was what, right after the season ended, he was right back up. Freeman went right on the plane to go to do more recruiting. Like Kelly would take a couple weeks off here and there, especially like right after. No, it was right after signing day. Is what I'm is what I mean. Yeah, right after signing day, Freeman was right back on the plane come Monday. Man, I'm just telling you, it, Kelly, he'd take a week or two off. I'm he go do those. He wouldn't go do in home visits right away. I'm so frustrated because I see all these changes. I see a lot of this work behind the scenes. I and and, but it needs to pay off. And until Notre Dame gets higher level on-field results, there's always going to be that negativity. I just want to see the hard and genuine work pay off. Uh, Somebody saying Marcus doesn't golf. I've said this a million times, and I'm not joking. (laughs) If I have a head coach, not a retired coach, an active head coach that's good at golf, red flag. You do not want your head coach, while he's the head coach, to be good at golf. It's a red flag. He's spending too much time out there chipping and putting and not recruiting. I want my coach to be good in retirement, not while he's there. It's a red flag. If I were to ever go golfing with Marcus Freeman, I would go to the hundreds. That's what I'm saying. Uh, By the way, hold on, everybody. Everybody knows that Luke's joking, right? in the chat about me and the LSU family last year when I was at Disney and had an interaction with them. Just so you know, I don't want anybody to be confused. Uh, he is joking about all that. Okay. So just know that. Go ahead. My bad. Oh, once I get, once I get off the call, I'm going to have to go see what he was saying. Yeah. Yeah. He's saying that I am (laughs) acting inappropriately in Florida and being, yeah. So anyways, he's joking. You guys, just so you know. (laughs) Well, uh, Anyway, yeah, Freeman, I don't want you being good at golf right now, man. So, yeah, back to that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, well, we got that linebacker yesterday. I was real happy about that. I mean, oh, he's not that, good enough that, because that, he's that, not a five-star, five-star-plus guy. Not good enough, not interested. Freeman sucks. Next. <laughs> Mike, I'm sorry, man. I uh, don't – I just can't, like – It's so frustrating. And at the same time, I can't, but I can't, I cannot and will not totally go nuts defending all we're doing because the on-field results have not been good enough. I am not completely satisfied. And and so I'm just not, there's a lot of nuance here, man. There's a lot of nuance. Yeah, I mean, Obviously, for our standards, we have not done enough on the field, but it's a process. That's what I try to. That's what I try to tell people. And when it comes to Notre Dame, our some of our fan base is willing to go through the process. Some of them want results immediately, which obviously we all would like uh, results immediately. But that's not how, that's not the way it works, especially with uh, how Marcus was left that. That 2022 team was just – there was not a lot of talent on it. It yeah. took a lot to build that team up. And Yep. Yep. More so, than more than people realize. But, um, but we're getting to the point now where this roster is rolling over a lot. Freeman's DNA is on it. The excuses are going away, and you've got to start delivering. And it starts this year. You have to make the playoff or it's a total failure, and that's just the reality. And it doesn't matter if I like the guy or don't like the guy. That's going to be the standard. Make the playoff, and we go from there. Um, And that's the only way you're going to have people buying in, man. It's hard enough to live this life where everybody else hates you. We got half of our own people that don't even believe. 
Like I want to get our people before I'm worried about everybody else and getting respect from them. I would like more of our people to be on board, but I understand they're burned and they need a reason to buy in. And the reason is on the field. It isn't blind hope. It's results. And we haven't had them my whole life. I'm stressed out. I need another vacation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with Freeman, I've been one of his biggest supporters. And, but you're right. The excuses are running out. Year three is coming up. Year three is typically a big year if you're going to be a, a one of the one of the good uh, the good coaches at Notre Dame, one of the great ones at yep. least. It's a big year, and, uh, year so, three. Yep, and it lines up with the new playoff. So it lines not, up with all that, and you got a roster. I keep coming back to this. I think this roster is a pretty good blend of veteran guys and younger athletic, more athletic yeah. guys that, that that can work. I see a blend there that could work for Notre Dame. This is a big year and good things got to happen. Uh, you need to go 11 and one and make the playoff and host the playoff game the week of Christmas. Sorry. That's what I'm saying. We need to do that. That's where this all needs to end is everybody at Notre Dame Stadium and Santa Claus comes early the week of Christmas. Bring us a, a, a Southern warm team from where I just came from or something and let them come up there. That's where this all needs to go. Get people back on board. Yep. Uh, well, I'm saying uh, after year three, if he doesn't do anything, what are we going to say? So it is that big year yep. and we want someone like, well, I don't know who's all good at the group of five, but let's say the Raging Cajun, Louisiana Tech or whatever they are, Louisiana State, whatever. Well, not, not Louisiana State, but Louisiana Tech or whatever. Have them come up. Uh, for Christmas, whatever it uh, is week i just it's a you yeah. th th that's the only result people are going to accept that counts as success uh i think so that's where we want to be um hey man thanks for giving me a call on a monday it's good to be back in the mix with you all all right oh and uh real quick before i hop off one let you know i was able to get the 20th off of work so i will be there for the tailgate ah beautiful the more the merrier bring your people whatever man and look for the flags we'll have them in the main lot somewhere you can't miss it we'll be out there all day it's gonna be fun all right well i'll talk to you later john beautiful give me a call again appreciate that appreciate that matt miller there's a lot of scar tissue john oh i know oh i know trust me and I have it too. It's just, I... yeah, Kelly's building a monster on the swamp. It's just, listen, Brian Kelly's the one thing I'm never going to knock Kelly for is he's smart. He's smart. Kelly's always got an angle to look out for Kelly. I will say a lot of negative things about the guy. I'm never going to tell you he isn't smart. He's always smart enough to think about the next three things he has to do to protect his ego and pump it up. Kelly's smart. One of the most brilliant things he ever realized. This is pretty good self-realization. When he realized, I am not willing to do what it takes to recruit better at Notre Dame. So I need to go somewhere where the school and the location recruits itself to the top in-state talent. And there's a lot of it. Brilliant. Brilliant. He's been in Kelly's been able to get what eight or nine out of the top Louisiana in-state recruits. It's beautiful because they're going to go to LSU no matter who the coach is. Cause it's LSU and they're from there. And then you get all the credit for recruiting it. When it didn't, it recruited it because it's LSU and you don't have to read and you don't have to write and they give you money. Kelly's a genius for that. He gets all the credit that it, it recruits itself. He gets a lot of the credit. It's brilliant. I'm not criticizing. Good job. Good job. Smartest movie ever made. To do that in a talent-rich area at a school that recruits itself to local talent, regardless of who that guy is. That's brilliant. Good job, Brian. 407, what's going on? John, how you doing today, man? 
I'm doing good. I'm trying to get back in the mix after being gone for a week, and, and we're all over the board. Notre Dame fans never agree on anything. Some think we're trending up. Some think we're not good enough. I don't know, man. What, what, what do you think? Well, I mean, a lot of it uh, was addressed by the previous caller, and um, I mean, it makes perfect sense. The fan base is, of course, just tired. You know what I mean? You yourself as well. I mean, we love this team. We want to see a, see a championship. The drought's been too long, and whoever steps in the seat, if it's not moving quick enough, patience is gone, you know? Yep. Plus, I mean, you mix, you mix that with just the culture of social media as it is. And, John, you know everybody wants to see you explode. It's one of the caveats of your show. I know. As well as the information. I think you should make some merch with your face like a mega warhead. I think those would sell. <laughs> the problem the, the problem is I just don't think anybody wants a shirt with my face on it no matter what. Like I don't even <laughs> I don't even want to get a shirt with my face on it and have to look at it. But if it's something funny, maybe we do one where like my eyes are red and there's like flames coming out of my head or something like I, that is well, you might just think you smoke too much on that one. I think you should put always frustrated on that shirt. That's you know a good I mean? one. Go Irish on the bottom. Because it, it, it's it's funny, but the frustration is true. It's because of the passion for the team. And yeah, I won't go into all the psychoanalyze or anything like that. But it's tough being a Notre Dame fan. To your point earlier where you were mentioning about do other fan bases go through this? Absolutely. I'm sure they do. And Notre Dame's uh, at an even higher standard because they're Notre Dame. You yeah. know what I mean? People love to hate them. Or, or, or they love them to death. So, you know, can only hope for the best. I think we're in good shape with having um, having multiple quarterbacks. It's not going to be perfect with Freeman. He, uh, you know, is he's been doing great on the recruiting trail, but we'll see if that comes to fruition with what he's what he's done. I mean, at at, at to your point, we can't expect uh, it to be worse because he's definitely trying to put in the work. But if we don't do some do something this year that makes waves in the playoffs or God willing, further and, and get a championship since we had to watch those ugly winged helmets pull one off. Maybe that was the maybe that was the punishment, the last punishment for us right there, having yeah. to watch Michigan raise a trophy, and now we get to raise one. So just trying to be hopeful. Yeah, you know what I mean. But yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, the they're is just ready to pull heads off, man. You're you're right, and there and again, <clears throat> that's another point of frustration for me is. I felt like on my show and the interactions I had, there was a ton of excuse making for Kelly all these years, way past the decade on the job, even best since Lou, you know, this is good as it gets. You should be more appreciative. I caught all of those messages every day about, you know, this is what it is. It's as good as it gets. You know, you should be happy or whatever. I don't understand how Freeman comes and he has none of that flexibility and he's expected to be almost perfect right away. But Kelly did never won a major bowl we care about. And he kept people kept defending him for over a decade. Now the new guy's here and he, and suddenly the standard is you got to be great right away. I don't understand it. Where was all these standards for Kelly? They weren't there. Now the new guy's here and they expect perfection. But Kelly was allowed to golf instead of recruit. Everybody told me I was too hard on him. I can't make those make sense. <laughs> no, no, you're on point, John, definitely. I mean, look, Kelly got us to the brink he was going to get us to, and we've regurgitated that he didn't do anything worth anything. But he's still, uh, he's still. Got, I'm like, just asking, hey, if, if you want to have really, really but, high standards for Notre Dame, Fine, I'm with you, but they got to be consistent. Mm -hmm. The issue I have is I caught so much pushback when I criticized Kelly. People were making excuses for the guy. After 40 years of doing this and 10 at Notre Dame, people were making excuses for him falling short. The new guy's here, and now he's got to be perfect, and everybody wants to run him out of oh, town. Of I, but, but, why? but why? But why? But why? Why? You know how it is. Shit rolls downhill, man. And it, it's not necessarily fair. It's just that, unfortunately, he stepped into a prominent role. Um, and he's doing the best he can. And only time will tell if he can make something happen. But, you know, uh, the, I think the worst case scenario that you better hope that Kelly doesn't win one at LSU before uh, before Marcus or another coach gets one at Notre Dame. Otherwise, you're really going to be losing your blood pressure, man. Oh, I'm telling you, <laughs> the, the the Michigan thing is already bad enough. Um, and and the, the, the Michigan one's bad enough. I just, man, it, it's, 
It's just the gray area, man. We never agree on anything. Do Notre Dame fans ever agree on anything? It's just always a different debate, and we're all over the board. I just maybe that's well, like think, that I everywhere. Think agree on that, that. I think we all agree on that. We're absolutely tired of the drought. You know, I, I, I'm I'm pretty confident about that. You know, the frustration is real. Um, but you know. You know, Marcus can only do what he's doing. He's doing the best he can recruiting, and until Notre Dame makes some actual meaningful wins or hoist a trophy up, then, you know, you're only going to get what you're going to pay for. That's one thing I think is pros and cons to, you know, the NIL and all that, but, you know, Notre Dame's not poor either. So, you know, if they want to spend the money, um, I think that with the right coaches in place, and let me back up real quick, because that's one thing I like about Marcus. Is he an experience? Yeah. Is he great at recruiting? Maybe not perfect from what everybody's saying, and time will tell how those recru- recruits turn out. But it's all going to come down to coaching. I feel like he's he's good at picking the right pieces to put on the board, whether it's the players or it's the coaches. He knew the whole thing with Parker was a shit show, so he went ahead and got he got the right person. He got Denbrock in, you know. Denbrock's in now. You know, you got Golden. I mean, there's a lot of things to be excited about. You know, we we don't have just one quarterback. We've got most. Uh, Riley Leonard, yeah, the rental, okay, yeah. Well, you know, you get that guy in there to juice everybody else up. If he has a, a, a bum leg, that's sad to see. We caused it nonetheless. But uh, hopefully that's not the case. He comes and does great. Maybe he injures it somewhere through the year, but we have backups behind him. So, I mean, unless they see a talent disparity on the field, they're going to put whoever is the best out there who's ready. So I think, I think we're in, in a better position than we have, and I think the pieces are on the board right. And – Marcus is good at that. Say what you want about the guy, but you complain about who he's got as coordinators. You know what I mean? He's, he's moving the pieces around the board. And he seems to be getting the pieces to bring in for speed and athleticism. So, yeah, I mean, you got to give credit where credit's due. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's on the clock and it's year three. Like you said, yeah. people are just there. People <laughs> are tired of waiting. And if something doesn't shake this year, yeah. you lose in that first round of the playoffs. They're going to be calling for his head. Yeah. And that's whoever goes in there. Even worse for a coach, if you bring in someone with experience, like years of experience, say say a Denbrock came in and was a head coach with all those years of experience, you're like, this is what we need. And then he tanks, yeah. like Charlie Weiss. Hear about that. So, yeah. you know, I, I, I think we're going to see more good than bad, though. Me too. Um, I just, I get, I get the frustration, man. I, like, I, I'm... I'm there. I just see so many new things I like going on in Notre Dame now. But if it, if people don't see it on Saturdays in the games and that final win-loss column, it's not going to matter to a lot of people. The frustrating thing for me is seeing all these changes that I think are great, but not being able to pin them on better results yet. That's the ultimate proof. Not yeah. me saying I think they're doing a better job opening old recruiting pipelines and getting doors open and building relationships and jumping on these guys earlier in the recruiting cycle. All of that, the little changes with uh, all the NIL stuff that they're trying to do, and it's still not refined good enough for a lot of people. I understand that. They're getting more mm-hmm. flexibility with the transfer portal, even though you can't always see that it's going on behind the scenes. Get All of these things are being worked on, but it's got to result in wins or nobody's going to care. Like I'll appreciate it, but if if, if you don't win enough, if you don't make the playoff this year, nobody's going to care. And I'm not going to make excuses for them. You got to make the playoff this year, period. Well, it's even tougher now because look what you got to do when you get in the playoffs. You're not playing two games. Yep. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's only getting rougher as we go. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I mean it. That's just that's what it is. Like I said, I, I think I think Marcus is doing a fantastic job recruiting. I think he's putting the right pieces on the board, and that's what you want out of a leader who's quote unquote inexperienced. Well, not quote unquote. Well, he is inexperienced. Yeah, fact. Yeah, but you know, he what he seems to be able to do well is he knows how to manage putting the right people in the right positions that know what they're doing, and we'll see how that translates to the field. But if you're not excited at least and a little bit positive about what you're seeing then you're a glutton for punishment. You know what I mean? Because it's never going to be perfect. And more fan bases are are in turmoil than not. You know what I mean? That's a fair point. You're right. Dude, I really think, I think. But but you see it though, John. You see it and the fans can see it. And you've mentioned it on your your show several times. The right people are in the right position. Everything that you complained about with Marcus, he's plugging those holes. Now we'll see how it turns out, but what else do you want from the guy? Except for if he tanks this year, then that's that. And he tried the best he could, but 
I'm pretty positive and, and, and hopeful from what I'm seeing that, you know, we're going to see some results, you know, time yeah. will tell. I, um, it's, we're in a weird, we're in a weird spot and the pressure's ramping up and the excuses are going down and it is about to be winning time. And, uh, and this is a big year and, and you need to show people that everything you're doing behind the scenes is starting to translate on the field. And, and it isn't try hard. It's wins. Like we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. It's, it's wins. And so I don't know, man, I'm, 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 cautiously optimistic. This needs to be a really good year. And mm -hmm. I think it can be a really good year. And you got to make that playoff and host a home game. That's what I need this to end up being. Absolutely. That's and it. I'll throw one more quick, quick thing in there without going through a rabbit hole. So I'd let you go in case you have any other callers. Plus I know you've been on for a while, but um, you know, the Texas A&M thing without beating the dead horse, the previous callers nailed it as well. That is not a slouch team. They may not be a juggernaut, but they're definitely not Navy. They're not Michigan state. You know what I mean? This is an SEC school. You come in there flat into that stadium, you're going to get ran out of that stadium, and we're going to look like we did down in Miami a couple of years ago. Hopefully that's not the case. If we truly have made the steps, or I should say Marcus has made the steps and put the pieces in place that we discussed, that team should go out there and from the opening kickoff be knocking helmets off. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just showing <laughs> that they're ready to go. And if that's the case and we win that game, I don't care if we win by a point, Yeah. as long as it doesn't look like trash and it's just heavy, heavy competition for everybody just hitting and playing. And it looks, uh, uniform. Like everybody's in unison, man, we should be excited. I don't care what we win by. Give me a field goal. win, one point win. we walk yeah. out of Texas station with a conviction uh, win, not an ugly lucky win. And the future is bright dude. For sure. There is so much leaning on that one game. All this stuff we're talking about, it's what do like what direction we're trending and where the fans are coming from? Yeah. That tech and, and, that and result sitting there saying, Oh, but Texas AM isn't any good, blah, blah, blah. Well, let me tell you something. You lose to Texas AM, say how you feel that. Oh man, go that, out there and win the game. You can criticize all you want, but it's a W. Dude, that it's game it, 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 it's leaning heavier. Heavier on needing the win, obviously, and the way we win is so important. We yeah. come out there looking like deer, a deer in headlights, and A and M just screws up and hands us the game on accident. That's not convincing. I, I, I as a fan, want to see them step into that stadium, hostile, twelfth man going crazy, and then going from from each snap, just yeah. playing like they did against Ohio State without a ten man problem. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I mean, all the way down to the to the wire, just playing a a good game with an offense that actually can move yeah and you you uh, <clears throat> you need to get it you need to get it because the there's so many fans that are wait and see hesitant to really buy in fully all of that in that game one mm -hmm. is going to be the emotional driver of the whole season if they win it then you're going to be on an emotional high and everybody's going to well, say John, when's the last time we even won People yeah. say, oh, it's just Texas A&M, but when's the last time we even won a game that has any meaning to it even like that? And then the it's other thing is, long. the other thing is, if you're able to win that game, even if it is ugly, if you win it by a point or whatever, then you have Northern Purdue and Miami leading into Louisville. You should be able to click those wins up. So then you'll have momentum coming oh, into that, you right now, coming no into that home game at Louisville. I'm very confident, John. No matter what happens with Texas A&M, I'm confident that Louisville is going to get their asses handed to them this year in our stadium. Yeah. What happened the year before was completely ridiculous. No offense, Louisville had a, had a talented team, but that was that was typical Notre Dame right there. You mentioned that in your, in your shows. Yep. Um, you know what I mean? And because they did that, I think they're going to get a shellacking in our stadium this year. Yeah. Um, and uh, <clears throat> week one games always get – outsized emotion because they're the one you're thinking about all summer that's building towards. And so week one always gets overreacted to. It's a big moment and there's no excuses. Notre Dame needs to find a way to go there and win that game. Yep. And we go from there. Well, it's big for A&M too, John, because yep. like you, you know, you've heard it before. I don't care what people say about Notre Dame. You circle that game, no yep. matter who you are. Yep. That is, that is, that is, and to be an opener, to be an opener, I don't care if Notre Dame won five games the year before. It's Notre Dame. You're ready to play that game no matter who you are. I don't care if you're Alabama. You're ready to play Notre Dame. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? Like yep. you're, you're ready. So it, it's going to be great. I'm excited. Um, more positive than negative. I don't want to hold you up any longer in case you got any other callers, but you always have a fantastic show, John, and uh, welcome back. 
from vacation. I'm going to tune in daily. Um, you know, big respect from Orlando, Florida, man. Go Irish, man. I really Let's appreciate that. The bullshit. Hey, thank you, man. Uh, give me a call whenever. Good callers today, man. Everybody was good. This is beautiful. Um, I think everybody's been good today. Um, here. <laughs> <laughs> PK definitely feeling the pressure when you're releasing eagles into the wild on social media you're trying to get some goodwill you guys it was did you all see this on twitter brian Ke just for no reason at all brian kelly releasing eagles into the wild off a cliff does anybody remember that church song when I was little in Catholic school? Do you remember that church song? And what was it? Something like, uh, he will raise you up on eagle's wings. And I'm just picturing Kelly like holding onto an eagle with one hand on each and letting them fly him around. And like, there's Kelly. He's flying through the swamplands of Louisiana. There he is. He's going to Mardi Gras. I will raise you up on eagle's wings. And it could, the bird could drop him off right on the second hole and he could tee off or whatever. <laughs> oh my God. <sighs> yeah. That's the other thing, man. It's so funny. Kelly got that little deal with Feinbaum. That little deal with Feinbaum and, uh, oh, Andrew, you know, Andrew says, you know, he was uncomfortable doing that. I guarantee you all Kelly was thinking is, can we, uh, can we take care of that bird and I can eat it for wings? I, Kelly didn't care. <laughs> oh my God, <clears throat> man. Elko will dial up the pressure against the limping Riley Leonard. That's a good start to week one. Thanks a lot, SPF. <laughs> Notre Dame starts the year and our quarterback runs out there limping. We haven't even played it down yet. And he's out there dragging his leg around. I'm sorry, but the eagle thing was just so funny to me because Kelly did look like, man, I'm a northern dude. I ain't, I ain't no, do I look like a zookeeper to you people? But it was like, okay, fly away, little birdie. Oh, my God. Oh, that's really, really funny. <clears throat> Says, I didn't get alert. There was a show today. I don't know. I put it, I put it all out. I put it in the uh, chat. I did a tweet and I created the episode last night. You should have been able to see it. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the, <laughs> I just can't get over it. I'm just picturing Kelly leaning on Eagle's wings, just being flown around Louisiana to recruit. Oh my gosh. Jay Lehman, always good with the research. I look further. Since 2003, only four teams have had three or more regular season losses with Eisman winner. 23 LSU, 16 Louisville, 11 Baylor, 07 Florida. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Uh, uh, all right, you guys. Full two-hour show, man. It's good to be back. And we had a good bank of callers. I let people go longer because we had callers, but not too many. Where like I had to keep them moving, um, <clears throat> and so this this was a good start to get back into things, um, and I didn't even really get into a lot of my stuff, so that's fine because I wanted to give you guys some time in the chat, and then I'll put out a video tomorrow, and then we'll be back on the uh, program Wednesday morning, and I'll have time to get into more of my stuff. I got two dumb Florida stories I didn't even get to. Two dumb Florida stories I didn't even get to today at all. So if you want to hear about dumb Florida stuff happening to John, stay tuned on Wednesday. Because I got two of them for you. Would only happen to John in really dumb Florida activities. All right, you guys. Thank you very much. I appreciate you being here. Um, 
Andrew, don't worry about it, man. I People were saying Andrew was like calling me out and ripping me. Uh, no, he wasn't. We're just having a discussion. It isn't like that. Andrew, I saw that you wrote like, John, no disrespect. What? You weren't disrespectful. We're talking about Notre Dame. I didn't take anything untoward with any of that. I didn't take any of that. That's all fair game. That's what this platform's for. I love you guys. Thanks for donating. Thanks for chatting. Thanks for calling. And I genuinely mean this. I miss you guys when I'm gone that long. I feel like I'm not connecting with my people. It's good to be back. I miss you. Have a good day, you guys.